million dollars each will go to each and every one of you who survives the end of this video. Just kidding, I'm not that rich. What's going on folks and welcome to another reputized video. House on Haunted Hill is directed by William Mallon and stars Jeffrey Rush, Femke Jensen, Ali Larder, Tay Diggs, Jeffrey Combs, and a whole bunch more. It follows these five people who gets invited by accident to this mansion, to this haunted mansion where this really rich billionaire is hosting a birthday party for his wife. He offers them a million dollars each if they stay through the night. It is a remake of the 1959 classic of the same name. I have never seen that one, but this one, it was really good. This movie came out in 1999, and it came out when horror movies was actually good. Around the time when I actually first got started getting into horror movies, very shortly after Scream and Halloween and all them. So when I came across this little slice of hell, I was really intrigued. The characters was great. I can't think of a single character in there. All but one. But I can't think of a single character in this movie that I hated. But the one I didn't care for that much was Femke Jansen's character. She played a little bit of a bitch. I just didn't really care for her. But the chemistry between Jeffrey Rush and her was kind of hilarious in my opinion. They picked a perfect guy to play that role as Vincent Price. If you look at the way Vincent Price looked in the original, Jeffrey Rush really does resemble him. That mustache and everything, they actually did a really good casting choice for that. Chris Catton was the guy that was that would direct him inside the house at the beginning of the movie. He was really funny. He brought a really comedic tone to this film. Out of scotch, thanks to you, ass. That line still cracks me up. Jeffrey Combs was the perfect guy to play the main ghost villain in this. He was awesome. There was one scene in there where Jeffrey Rush's character was looking through the TV monitors and he saw him walk into the room, but the way he was walking, he would walk like a robot. And then he would shake like this. And then holding a knife. I thought that was kind of weird, but it was cool. I liked that characterization in him as the main ghost villain, Dr. Richard Vatican, who was actually over that mansion back when it was an insane asylum for the criminally insane back in the 30s. It was a good story. It was straight to the point. You survive the night, you get a million dollars. Hooray, you're rich. Yeah, it's not that easy. <laughs> William Malone's direction was pretty good. They made a lot of good choices in this movie, I thought. Don Davis's score was really eerie. It was really good. There was certain scenes. He tried to make it really low, but you could hear like a high-pitched like that. And it was, it was really good. Like the first time I watched it, of course I was a kid, but to this day, I, I'm, I'm still like, don't go in there. Don't go in there. The cinematography by Rick Boda was just genius. Granted, there was some scenes where one of the characters would get captured by the ghost. You'd have all these real fast shots. I mean, I thought that was cool, but it was real fast. I thought that was okay, but for the scene that it was portraying, I guess you could say it was it was really pretty good, but it took me by surprise, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> Interestingly enough, Rick Boda, who does the cinematography work in this, he later on has went on to direct a few of the Hellraiser films. Three of them, to be exact. So I thought that was pretty cool. The effects in this movie wasn't the best. They could have done better, but for a movie that came out at a time when the uh, special effects in movies was still trying to find its place, I guess you could say it was okay. But to today's standards, it wasn't all that good. Like, when the main ghost pops out at the end, by the third act, it looked like a big fat brillo pad. I was trying to think in my head long and hard on how I could describe how that looked. It looked like a big fat Brillo pad. And then in other shots, it looked like a really poorly designed bat. It was like a bunch of ghosts huddled up in one and like a big ball. It just looked like a really poor vision of a Brillo pad. That's what I thought of it. It wasn't the best. 
Setting all that aside, this movie felt like an actual horror movie. The scares actually made me jump and it was a good story. Everything about it was pretty much just about on par. The pros, it was a good story. It was gore. It was a good horror movie. I've said that many times, I know, but I can't think of any other way to say it, guys. The only con I'll have to mention is the effects. Like I said, just like some of the ghosts didn't really look real. I know there were supposed to be ghosts, but still, they kind of could have done better. My final thoughts, I definitely recommend this for anybody who's a horror fan. Especially for a remade horror movie. I'm giving House on Haunted Hill a B+. Thank you so much guys for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. Stick around for more reviews coming soon. Like, subscribe, get reputized. Happy Halloween because it's just around the corner. Peace to Rep.